So, you reopened the museum? Not yet, no. Oh, okay. Um, the, 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 they're saying that the Beijing uh, Gallery Weekend will happen at the end of May, and so we have the plan to have a show at that time. Ah. Um, and so what, yeah. what, so what did you do? What did happen? How did you try to make the, the museum alive when it was closed? Because you are probably the most famous museum in, <laughs> no. I mean, contemporary museum in China, right? I mean, it's been, um, it's been all about, you know, as everyone's discovering, it's about what you can do online uh, to kind of keep the message out there and to keep um, to keep people interested and excited. So on February 29th, we had a really amazing um, online concert, actually, with uh, seven performers who were based, somehow or another connected to an exhibition that we had up when, when this all began. Uh, which is called Voluntary Garden, and it's a it's a it's by a curated by an artist called Colin Chinnery, who um, brought together a kind of it's kind of an ethnography of the Beijing music scene. So you had all kinds of different musicians playing, and then he edited their different uh, performances as if they were together, when in fact they were never together. So we did a sort of similar thing online with them. Um, with different musicians kind of coming in for a moment. Uh, and that we to, can to see today? We can see that on the side? Yeah, I can, we can send you some, yeah, I'll, I'll send you uh, some links, yeah. But including, uh, do you know Ryuichi Sakamoto, the Japanese um, composer and musician? He's, he, he's quite, um, he's very popular in China, and he, he's based in New York, so he, he gave a special performance and he included like he used a symbol on the drum set that said made in Wuhan on it. And uh, he offered a sort of special greeting to all the people at the end. So it was, it was really quite uh, moving and this became really a, an iconic um, image and uh, moment. I think not, you know, far beyond the art circle, people were really uh, moved by it. So that was, I guess, the most um, prominent and successful so far, but we, we plan a number of other things like that. And it's just been a time to really think about, you know, how we present ourselves online. So, of course, digging back and finding all the, the best of these last 12 years, different, um, different talks and performances and, and exhibition views and things, uh, and, and publishing them in, a, in an accessible way to people who maybe were not paying attention, you know, seven or five years ago um and then yeah the rest is just about trying to you know do all those things you never have time for when everything's moving so quickly like you know update our whole contact management database right like get a new system in place to keep track of everyone we're we're dealing with i mean all these kinds of like housekeeping projects i think it's like when everyone's you know stuck at home they clean out their closets. It's a little bit similar uh, <laughs> but, uh, to how I'm, it works in the museum too, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, I read that uh, in Shanghai, for example, the Saint Pompidou Shanghai reopened. What do you think? You yeah. didn't reopen. I thought yeah. you reopened too. Yeah, no, it was. I mean, you know, every city in China is in a different place with this. And Shanghai is, uh, Shanghai's probably been the best in terms of controlling the epidemic. So, um, yeah, they're already at the point where they're looking towards reopening the schools and, yeah, the power station, Shanghai Museum, and Pompidou, they all reopened. But in Beijing, it's still not legal to open. Um, so, you know, as soon as, it's, as soon as it's safe and legal, we'll reopen. So we are kind of on standby. But, you know, the, what's, what's kind of crazy is that even if China can reopen, you know, many of our exhibitions are international, um, and now you know people can't really come to China from elsewhere in the world without spending. Like, if you come to Beijing, first of all, you can't actually come directly to Beijing. You have to go to a surrounding city, and you need to spend two weeks in quarantine at your own expense in a hotel that the government puts you in. So, um, you know, you can't exactly have we have artists coming for the moment. So. For the summer, we, we believe we'll be able to be open, but, you know, we were previously going to have a show called Somewhere Downtown about New York in the 80s with all kinds of, 
you know, artists from that period. Um, and that, that show is now postponed until it looks like until 2021. So we, we are, um, urgently rapidly developing a new, a new show, um, responding to the current situation with mostly Chinese artists or with works that don't require, you know, artists to be present to install so that we can have something for the summer. And, uh, what, and so right now, complete. when it will reopen, what shall you show? Um, so this, the, the, the new exhibition that we're working on, um, I don't quite have a title yet because we really just started working on it this week. We have a tentative title, but I don't, I don't want to say it just because, um, I'm worried we, we might still change it, but I can tell you the second we know. Um, but yeah, it's literally, it's two months from now. So, so we'll be kind of curating in real time. Um, and the idea is to present, um, a show that's really responding to this, You know, I think there's so many levels, right, of, of the situation. It's a it's a global event like we've never seen before, right? People all around the world kind of having a shared experience. Um, it also puts China's relationship with the world into a whole new kind of dynamic. Um, and I think it raises a lot of questions about our relationship to our world and our environment, right? The kinds of things we were saying we needed to do for so long, suddenly, you know, no one's flying anywhere. Um, <laughs> people... People are not moving around the way they were. So um, it's, it's, it's fascinating and, and, uh, as much as it's also you know, tragic and, and serious. Um, so it's a, it's a chance for us to, to respond. And I'm trying to really um, use the flexibility of, a, you know, as a, I mean, that's kind of one of the great things about being an institution in China is things just have always moved a bit faster here just because the institutions are younger and not quite as bureaucratic or as established. So, you know, for example, the Picasso show we organized in almost like basically one year. Um, so, you know, whereas as in the U.S., that would take three or four. And so what, I, was so, you know, this, what was the attendance for this? What was the attendance for the Picasso show? Picasso was, was, was uh, 350,000 uh, people. For how so, long? Yeah, I mean, for, for 79 days. Yeah, so it was quite fast. Uh, quite Yeah, it was very good. But, you know, I mean, we're not... When we reopen, we'll, we'll probably had um, we'll, we'll probably have quite a number of um, I don't know if restrictions is the right word, but it'll be you know be we'll we'll, we'll have to reopen cautiously. Um, I don't think we'll be able to have you know the kinds of crowds we did uh, for Picasso, even you know without. I mean, I, yeah. Um, I'm sure there will be temperature checks and there will be, you know, all the kinds of registration and everything that, that you see around the city now. So, but I mean, for us, it's, you know, we need to, we need to carry on and we need to continue to process and to present and to discuss. And Because the danger now is that, the danger now yeah. is that people stay in the house and think about their local identity and not to open their mind to the international landscape right so people yeah, like you true, have something true. to do yeah, yeah very really american I mean, and very chinese in a way yeah i mean we have a, we have another show i mean it's also um going to depend on when You know, at our second location, the dune by the ocean, I've told you about this, right? The museum by the sea. So we have a show there ready to go. Um, it's called Resistance of the Sleepers. So it's about, it's kind of, I don't know if you know that book by Jonathan Crowry from a few years ago called 24-7, um, about kind of, you know, the constant global clock and the constant, you know, uh, around the clock temporality and sleep as a kind of form of resistance. So it's curated by our, one of our young curators called Ara Chiu, and um, it's a it's a beautiful poetic group show, you know, Chinese international artists kind of on this theme. So we'll have the show installed um, in, in in about three weeks from now, and ready to open as soon as you know the area where Dune is located gets the uh, gets the green light. Oh, nice! That's very interesting. Again. Yeah, I mean, it's you sort of have to be. It's it's a it's a balance between, um, you know, being cautious, but also then being prepared for, 
you know, when things become possible again, because, you know, you don't, it's, it's, it's also sort of somehow easy to totally shut down and, and um, you know, shut the world out, but then, you know, to instead be kind of working and trying to respond and monitor and be ready for, and you so know, when, when, when do you it's think again possible. What, so when do you think it could be possible to reopen? In how many weeks, for example? Well, I mean, I, so the best signal we have now is that, you know, the, the gallery weekend has announced the date of May 21st uh, for, for gallery weekend Beijing. And I mean, because that's organized by the 798 management, which is a state owned, you know, entity, um, we think that's, that's, you know, they, they, they would have made that decision together with Beijing authorities or with some sense of, you know, where things are going in Beijing. So, so uh, I, I don't think earlier than that is really going to be a possibility, but I think that that's a good, a good date to work towards. Yeah. Um, and and we're, we're excited to have some surprises, you know, when that happens too, we're redoing our, we're, we've got a new partner to, to open a new bookstore, um, which we'd never, you know, our bookstore had kind of fallen behind, but we've, We partnered with really well, who I think are the best uh, the best art bookstore in China right now to have a location on our premises. Um, we're also one of my deputy director. His name is Yo Yang, is the curator of the sort of public art unit of the gallery weekend. So they're activating all kinds of spaces, you know, outdoors and around 798. So you know, hopefully that's that's the moment where things. Um, begin to come back to life. But, you know, again, I mean, we're, we're at the mercy of forces much bigger than ourselves. So, of course. Um, we, yeah, we, 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 you know, we, we, organizationally, that's sort of what we're aiming for. And then, um, you know, inshallah, right? 